Hello everybody. This is the lecture of pond farming and this lecture is about a research project that was carried out by uh, now Dr. Stefan Hügel uh, who did a doctorate on uh, this aquaculture system that he developed himself and we made it a research project, found funding and it's really really exciting because the implications of uh, this research are very very far-reaching. Um, so let's jump into it. Uh, structure of this lecture, uh, the problem of the disturbed nitrogen cycle in agriculture, <clears throat> the presentation of the potential of floating plants for resource efficient intensification, and uh, then the case study proposal of a duckweed aquaculture system as an alternative uh, animal husbandry system. And with um, the problem statement, one of the huge problems uh, that we have with environment, with uh, agriculture, is the enormously low, low um, fertil um, N, N fertilizer efficiency. Um, the efficiency has dropped from 1960, 80%. So people still applied and most of that was taken up. 2000 already only 30% were taken up by plants, rest going to groundwater and 2005 and now uh, even worse than that. So this is absolutely crazy and that cannot go on. But what happened? So we have um, a um, hidden cost of nitrogen fertilizers that's enormous. So the market price of wheat is around uh, 200 um, US dollars per ton. And the cost of water pollution has been calculated to over $2,000. And uh, this is, uh, well, not really all that great, isn't it? And even for organic wheat production, still there is quite a bit of damage through uh, the nitrogen uh, that is um, well uh, used in cultivation. Um, the economic, uh, economic profits from N fertilizers are around uh, 20 to 80 billion uh, euros per year. Resulting costs for health impacts, pollution and climate damage are a bit higher. And so that's uh, once again showing the system doesn't work out. It doesn't work out for society. Uh, health cost due to N fertilizer application. There are considerable health hazards due to ultrafine particles from ammoniac. And this is um, the uh, particle size of 2.5. That's really, really dangerous because it can enter into into the lungs and uh, well do big damage there. So the health costs from PM 2.5 formed only from uh, production of US agricultural exports is um, 36 billion US dollars. The net value of the US agricultural exports are much below that. So it's a losing game, but unfortunately losing game once again for society and not the companies that are driving this uh, crazy uh, misbehavior. Um, then global animal husbandry and sustainability. Uh, this is what normally was considered progress long time ago when people were still thinking that um, industry will fix everything and the, the contrary has happened um, and approximately 80 percent of the agricultural area are used for livestock farming. Um, approximately 37 percent of the arable land uh, for feed cultivation and so that's uh, well not really uh, all that intelligence as it seems. And if we look at the situation with nitrogen in a more like material flow manner, we see that currently 
there is this industrial production of uh, nitrogen um, in Harbour Bosch plants and a lot of nitrogen is produced. A lot is lost to the groundwater. Some of that goes into the uh, taps where people are drinking their water and this once again is something that has huge impacts on uh, human health. Uh, so groundwater contamina contamination happens big time. It's a problem around the world and uh, Germany is actually under um, well legal um, battle for not uh, following up with the legislation of EU. So that costs a lot of money and uh, the, the, the industry is so stubborn and uh, the impact on policies is so big that nobody really dares to look at the root causes and uh, it's tried to, to fix uh, things that have gone wrong. Also a lot of the emissions to the atmosphere and that's where we have this uh, particle problem with the ammoniac what goes into the lungs of people and also animals. So 83% loss of nitrogen in agriculture and it wouldn't be the problem for the loss alone but it's groundwater contamination, contamination of the, of the atmosphere and uh, also uh, this pollution of, of nitrogen is something what is uh, uh, help uh, uh, pr uh, supporting the, the over fertilization of um, uh, water bodies uh, of the seas ultimately and it's not only inefficient for nitrogen but the system is also very inefficient for phosphate for potassium and you name it so it's, it's um, not making sense. Then this all is linked to land degradation and well we have talked about this in other classes I mustn't repeat this the situation is really dire and uh, we have a vicious cycle so uh, more end fertilizer was used that contributed to soil degradation uh, decreasing agricultural areas and that once again led to intensification of agriculture. So it doesn't work out at all. And now let's look into the protein yield per hectare and here we see that uh, the systems are not very efficient um, and um, here we see that uh, the protein uh, productivity is um, well differing uh, very much uh, depending on uh, what we eat. So uh, beef and mutton, pork, uh, fresh produce, poultry, eggs, dairy, wheat, um, and uh, maize, and and here we have. Uh, pulses like uh, soy and um, so that's what we get and maybe you think this year is high but you will learn otherwise it's lousy so resource efficiency in animal husbandry so instead of uh, fodder cultivation more recycling of uh, residues um, and the use of non-agricultural land also in combination with forestry. So there are quite a few things that could be done. So then uh, if we look into alternatives we can go to floating plants. Um, these would be local feedstocks, extremely productive no farmland necessary and high efficiency on fertilizers because these plants take up virtually everything and make um, great fodder in huge amounts and the numbers will follow. So what are the choices? So there is uh, duckweed and it has exponential growth, uh, the potential for uh, exponential growth. Um, of course circumstances, temperature, 
availability of nutrients, sunlight, and so on. That's that's clear. That is uh, as with all systems. It produces 25 times more protein than soybeans, and soybeans are well what is used on a worldwide scale with enormous uh, detrimental effects to the environment. It's comparable with soybean protein from uh, the quality, but 25 times as much. Uh, nine times higher nitrogen uptake than uh, corn. Um, then Azola, it's the other choice, also uh, can do exponential growth and uh, six times higher nitrogen fixation than soybeans. So soybeans are legumes, as you probably know, and um, this can uh, produce a lot more nitrogen. So forget about uh, the industries that are producing agricultural nitrogen. doesn't make any sense. Nature can do that locally much better without any external uh, energy inputs without truck transport, without all the other uh, downsides of the industrial effects. And it can make 1.1 uh, tons of nitrogen per hectare and year. That's amazing, amazing numbers. Uh, so um, nitrogen in Azola breeding. So the, you don't need the stupid uh, industrial process that requires a lot of energy. It's 10 kilowatt hours per kilogram of nitrogen. Uh, so one of the big uh, 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 well, energy sinks in our society. And uh, with the Azola breeding system, uh, we don't need that at all. You remember maybe the big arrow that we had at the beginning. So integrated, this all goes hand in hand and groundwater doesn't get polluted at all. Some nitrogen goes into the atmosphere that cannot be um, avoided uh, completely, but uh, it's a lot less than in the conventional systems. And so that can feed uh, many, many people. Uh, that's what should come first. So that was a uh, wrong place. but. This is how the system that we had before. So we get away from that. We take care of this. We take care of the groundwater and we have less pollution of the atmosphere. So some more details. So it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Azola and duckweed. Uh, Azola is actually a fern, a floating, floating fern and uh, well, duckweed I think that's commonly known and available around the world in, in water bodies. You see it on many natural water bodies, especially if they are um, um, well, having too much um, phosphate so that they are blooming. Um, now the protein yield uh, per hectare and to compare uh, we need to change the scale. So this was the soybean. So that makes one, please remember that. And um, so that's uh, what we have here. And now let's change the scale. And there we are now. So that's once again, pulses, uh, soybeans. And uh, now we have changed the scale. So one is somewhere here. It was at the top before. So that's how um, you can as uh, falsely assume it's uh, high productivity. But if you compare to um, other production uh, units, you will see where this can go. So let's look at Azola. Wow, that's much better and produces lots more nitrogen by itself and so on. And if we look at um, the, the duckweed, uh, it's just incredible, almost 25 uh, tons of protein per hectare and year. So that's absolutely amazing. And to continue with this, uh, this is applied in different parts of the world. And um, there is like uh, aquaculture is very well known in uh, 
Southeast Asia, East Asia, uh, and um, there are many fish ponds with tilapia or various uh, carps. No extra food needed with carp and so on. Some fish would need addi additional feed. No machines, continuous harvest, no external inputs. Industry doesn't like that, obviously, but it's good for people. People have money, they have uh, good income, they have wealth, and the money doesn't, well, get extracted to some shareholders that are sick because they don't know what to do with all that money in some cases. Uh, so <laughs> it's ridiculous, ridiculous. You guys collecting, uh, now it's not so much um, uh, billionaires anymore. It's now four trillionaires. Wow, you are great guys. You are <laughs> pretty stupid. <laughs> Um, sorry for that. For, sorry, sorry for that rant. It's, um... <laughs> and uh, this system can uh, produce 10 tons or per hectare and year of fish. Just amazing. Traditional systems, and um, I've seen these systems also when I traveled Southeast Asia. It's, it's just it's 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 uh, very very efficient. And um, now, if we look at um, the system, um, this is the uh, duckweed. Duckweed carp system. Uh, and uh, so, see where uh, beef is, see where pork is, poultry, eggs, dairy, and uh, this is so much higher. And this means there is a lot more quality food available. And uh, also, uh, if we compare the, 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 the style or the, the ways of industrial animal production, that's uh, unacceptable in many cases. And so, if we have like uh, huge ponds where uh, fish is swimming and floating plants are developing, uh, this seems to be much better in many aspects. So uh, the um, comparison of what is done in the Philippines, um, the rice azola fish duck, uh, fish duck system in the Philippines. So this is amazing. And this was all dug out by uh, Stefan Hügel in his research work. And um, so we have the production of rice as a benchmark. So rice would be 100%. Uh, the net yield would be like uh, 2.7 uh, tons per hectare and year. Uh, rice plus azola um, is more efficient already uh, than rice, azola plus fish and that makes more productivity in rice and in addition we have fish so another product uh, adding to the income net profit rising very very strongly and with this change this can mean a, a farmer hardly surviving children cannot go to school and um, famine and uh, ultimately giving up the land uh, that is then uh, just taken over by banks in most cases. Um, this means wealth for the local people, wealth and happiness and uh, children that can develop in all aspects. And now um, the absolutely great system is rice, azola, fish and ducks rice yield still increasing and these are numbers from from field tests and uh, fish yield um, pretty high and duck eggs yield number of eggs per hectare per year and look where the uh, where the profits are this is 100 uh, uh, 1500 um well compared to a hundred so just imagine this is the same space uh used in a 
in a more clever way. And a picture of, of such systems is, is shown below. So there are cultures in the world that have by far exceeded everything our so-called modern uh, agriculture has achieved because modern agriculture was tailor-made to make maximum uh, money in industry and not for uh, being maximum beneficial for um, the country and, and uh, the people. So let's let's go into some of the downsides of this. Um, so the water content of the biomass is around 90 to 95 percent. So what do you do with something? It's not really um, ideal for industrial production, and that's probably uh, the cause why this is not not applied more widely. So it needs to be. Um, daily harvested for maximum yield as well and all this goes into what i'm promoting strongly local production um, so that's part of our experiments our experimental setup and the product was really nice one of the nicest um, projects that i've ever done um, with my institute and um, well i i got plenty of uh, fresh duck eggs uh, whenever stefan was visiting or i was visiting the project was was done in oldenburg oldenburg near a bit behind bremen from from hamburg and so that was a, a nice nice extra to have um, all these wonderful fresh eggs uh, from well-fed animals what is rare you don't find that in the market very often that's only for private people because animals that or, 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 um, like a chicken or duck that just eats uh, wheat has no quality in the eggs or the quality is very low while when they eat green stuff the quality is very much higher. Um, then uh, for the um, uh, protein productivity with the literature that I've shown you before, Azola duckweed, um, that's what um, our experiments were showing. And for Azola, we were even higher than literature, but with duckweed, it was a lot less. Um, we don't really understand uh, why that was so, but uh, still um, efficiency is very, very high and um, more research would have to be done for looking into, um, well, what what was the, the cause, maybe the wrong uh, species. There are many duckweed uh, species. Um, then, um, Stefan did feeding experiments, but it, because it was uh, the assumption that we do better food quality and replace grain by uh, floating plants. And this was done um, in a comparison, feeding grain, uh, uh, grain feed at libitum, what means they can eat as much as they like. They always have access to uh, grain feed. And the control group was um, the, um, the access to duckweed and azola, uh, with, without access to duckweed and azola. So, so, um, and the result was hardly any difference in grain feed consumption. Whoopsala! And here we see experiments do not always do what theory would suggest, and so that was a failure. So, um, the conclusion of this part was that um, the savings in grain feed um, through uh, 10 to 20 percent of floating plant feeding. Um, the very variable influence on laying performance and feed efficiency was uh, observed 
but there was a clear positive influence on the ratio of omega-6 versus omega-3. As you should know, hopefully we need more omega-3 and specifically DHA, uh, EPA fatty acids that we don't really get easily except for from fish or uh, grass-fed uh, beef, for example and also from some algae that are specifically um, produced for that. So algae are a great source as well. Um, and um, having enough DHA, uh, EPA makes you a, mod, a lot stronger also um, to defend against uh, viruses. So, so that's a crucial part of your strategy to keep healthy, uh, have enough DHA, EPA. Science on that is absolutely conclusive and um, the reason that is, this is not uh, discussed more um, is that, well, if it's for our own benefit only um, and destroys big markets, uh, it is not really promoted very much. Um, that's my observation and uh, that's very sad indeed. Um, Nevertheless, the system that we have researched here is still uh, too resource, resource intensive. So that was leading to a shift to duckweed. So duckweed fed grass carp for high resource efficiency. So 26 grass carps feed 100% duckweed. So grass carp can do this. Uh, test duration was only 17 days because the time for the test was running out, unfortunately. Uh, growth rate 1.5% per day, feed conversion ratio 3.5. And um, if we calculate, so, so that's what we could do in those experiments. And by the way, we want to go on with these experiments. Uh, Stefan is building a much uh, larger uh, a unit now, um, luckily in a in the park of a of a castle of a friend of mine. So that's a very prominent place to to build something like that. So that makes some attention. There's also a huge permaculture operation already in place, and we still have the um, the research facility on the farm near Oldenburg Bremen. So if anybody's interested, we could easily start another doctorate there uh, if somebody is interested to, to uh, get themselves a scholarship for that. So everything is there and interesting environment as well. So global land requirement of agriculture. Area currently used for um, agricultural purposes. Uh, then thereof animal husbandry. Oops, Allah, wow. This doesn't really make much sense. Um, the protein production um, is uh, around 90 million tons per year. Um, and um, the area for um, duckweed grass carbs was the same amount of protein um, would be uh, only 2%, 2.8% of the current space required for animal husbandry. So getting down from this to this and uh, wow, this is something. Huh? All right, um, so um, then another um, thing that is, uh, well, noteworthy we started this project uh, as part of um, efforts to make use of manure. And um, we do have uh, stricter fertilizer regulations due to contaminated groundwater. And manure disposal is a problem in livestock regions. So the, uh, the problems with uh, groundwater uh, polluted with uh, nitrogen um, nitrate uh, mainly is overlapping very much with those areas with inten intensive um, animal uh, husbandry 
uh, animals that are mostly in cases in cages um, their lifelong the manure is transported uh, sometimes even from from here far away so that's pretty ridiculous and it's it's well very sad indeed that um, the state is allowing this to happen because like um, th there is a lack of leadership to say okay let's end this nonsense let's, let's stop this intensive um, production in very small parts of the land let's distribute um, uh, animal husbandry over all the arable land so that the um, uh, well manure or whatever form it is um, coming out can be used animals should be free ranging and so on and uh, so this doesn't make a lot of sense so that's why stefan wasn't too enthusiastic about this aspect of the work but nevertheless this is a possibility and uh, there is also um, the um, uh, duckweed has nine times higher nitrogen uptake than uh, corn, for example. Uh, nutrient utilization in a very small footprint. Local fish, food production, fish production can go with this. No groundwater pollution. And uh, that is something where uh, this can be a win-win situation. And that could be the topic for the next uh, doctorate could start as a master thesis so if you like to work on this let me know and also the the well uh, plant in the in the castle that is stefan setting uh, that stefan is setting up now is uh, well open for uh, well research um, because they founded a research institute there um, and Floating plants can be also uh, be held in mixed culture, what is often having many advantages. Uh, interestingly, um, we, we started with the Azola work uh, through a master thesis of uh, Stefan uh, actually in Ethiopia. And there he came up with uh, putting floating plants on water reservoirs to um, lower the evaporation the losses with evaporation and also to avoid mosquito infestation and both can be done with floating plants and at the same time these floating plants are fantastic fodder and so that's another win-win-win uh, situation in uh, remote harvesting and uh, so mixed cultivation uh, is very good because what we observed is that some of these azola plants were turning brown and reddish through too much sunshine so even it's a even though it's a tropical plant it was um, well like easily getting too much sun exposure and falling ill by that and uh, so that's where we need some uh, trees around um, agroforestry is ideal combination and with that azola can develop better and uh, duckweed doesn't have any of those downsides and so if you have a mixed culture you can profit from the nitrogen production so it's this is your nit uh, the azola is your nitrogen uh, factory so so it's um, often lacking and and um, especially in areas where people don't have that much money uh, but well, why don't they produce the stuff that is uh, locally available instead of um, uh, going for industrial fertilizers that also often are also polluted with cadmium and uranium? Um, so, um, what needs to change? Uh, do we really eat too many animal products? Are we too many people? Do we have to deal? with less no the the answer is opposite to that nature creates abundance if we cooperate with nature in a clever way there is abundance in everything and um, 30 billion people can live on earth in wealth if clever and in harmony with nature and so that's quote from mine and 
why do I say this? I don't say that it's uh, making sense to have 30 billion people, but it's well possible. And um, this is just to show you how ridiculous um, this hammering is that there are too many people on Earth. So too many people on Earth is a notion by people that are feeling up above. So if somebody says there are too many people, uh, others should go, of course not, they, they could go by themselves, but they mean others normally. Um, and uh, this is a, a thing that doesn't have any scientific support. So if we keep this planet in good shape, there is enough food for even 30 billion people. Uh, and as I said, it's well, maybe not making too much sense, but we did calculations that all the fodder that is produced in this uh, system, I've shown you how ridiculously inefficient it is. Um, all the fodder that is given to the cage animals is something that people could eat. Um, and so that's something where uh, we did some calculations and actually um, the, the fodder for those cage animals, uh, only uh, pigs and uh, a kettle, uh, could feed 70 billion people. Too many people on Earth? Hmm, don't think so. In many places there are. But if people are restoring degraded land, restoring barren land, that's great. So they can develop paradise and um, have a life in wealth with nice neighbors. And um, so that's what we need and balance the climate with that. So uh, some, um, well, calculations and um, this is World population approximately maybe 8 billion by now. Nobody really knows exactly. Agricultural area per capita today around 6,000 square meters. That's not even a hectare, that's 0.6 hectares. Uh, the calor uh, caloric equip uh, requirement per capita 2,900 uh, kilocalories. Um, grass carb calories are uh, 1,140 per kilogram and breaking this down with these numbers um, leads to um, a, a, well, through the yield uh, to a um, required area per capita of 3,700. And uh, so that's... Um, well, quite a reduction. Um, and add Azola to be nitrogen independent, and then we can have a daily fish production uh, with protein content um, to nitrogen factor. Um, um, that's uh, around uh, 131 grams nitrogen. Assumed nitrogen losses, 50%. External requirements, uh, 65.5 grams per day. Uh, Azola end fixation um, is um, well having 3 kilograms nitrogen per hectare and day. Uh, and just imagine how much energy is needed for the for the industrial nitrogen production with that. Uh, add a safety factor because systems are not always as efficient as they could be under optimal conditions. And then with the Azola, the area required uh, would only be 873. So that's, uh, well, significantly down um, eight times less, roughly, I think. So is that efficient enough? Total required area per capita, 27% um, less space wasted as at present, no more starvation, no more collateral damage of agriculture, no more land degradation, water pollution, air pollution, and uh, this can really go a long way. 
and some impressions of our research unit, Elsfleet, uh, Oldenburg, Oldenburg. And uh, so we even made a huge uh, greenhouse because we wanted to uh, let the production go into winter time uh, through storing uh, heat energy from the summer. It didn't really work out in this place because the situation was that the water table is too high, so we couldn't have an earth battery. Uh, but all that only came out while we were running the project already. Uh, this is some of the additional production. And this is, by the way, um, Stefan Hügel. And uh, he has produced amazing plants in addition. So um, this is taro, so fantastic uh, food plant. And uh, this is a view on the system, a lot of uh, very, very interesting uh, plants that can lead to many, many uh, local products. And of course, in here, there would be the fish, the grass carp. Right. Uh, in summary, current annual husbandry systems are largely inefficient. Floating plants have a great potential for shaping the future of animal husbandry. Pond systems enable local production of high quality feeds. And high quality means a lot of uh, omega-3 fatty acids and DHA, EPA. Um, and then existing animal husbandry systems can be optimized and fully floating plant based animal husbandry can save huge amounts of land and agrochemicals and energy and um, all that uh, is um, something that well makes it worthwhile to go on and that's exactly what uh, Stefan is doing now and um, he has also written a book about uh, trace elements because he found how important that is for the health of the animals and a lot of the substances that are uh, regularly given to animals um, are not well available for humans uh, that's quite strange finding as well all right with that i like to wrap up uh, the references unfortunately are twofold so i put this a lecture together from two presentations and I didn't have enough time to uh, really make the literature uh, from one so the ones in red in the slides are uh, in the second page and the ones in black uh, the first page the download for the file is in stud IP so you can find that there uh, but still I will show you the references uh, just quickly also in the video and if you want to can contact uh, Stefan Hügel um, by the way I wanted him to give the presentation uh, but due to some um, well, misunderstanding uh, he didn't get notified early enough and he couldn't do it so I um, jumped in and made this presentation now and so for you this might be also a learning on uh, if you want things done by others make sure they know early enough so that they have time to prepare and i've done this mistake uh, <laughs> too many times actually and uh, this is something i uh, well always regret when i put a whole day of work into something that could have been done by the person who is really doing this and he will bring out videos of his own and that will be announced as well but that takes a bit of time because he's currently uh, founding even today founding uh, his own company uh, and so that will go on this development thanks very much for your attention for your consideration and discussion as always discussion feedback in uh, stud ip okay thank you i'm out